Hey, what's up everyone? This is Chris and I have quite a tutorial for you Wi-Fi Pineapple users out there. Today I'm going to teach you how to set up a relay server on a virtual machine and access your Wi-Fi Pineapple remotely. And to access the Pineapple remotely, we're going to be using a technique called SSH tunneling. Now before we get started, I want to tell you a little bit about SSH tunneling and explain why it is that we need a relay server to do this. And I've actually created some illustrations to help me explain all of this, so let's go ahead and take a look at those. So our goal here is to be able to communicate with our Pineapple and have our Pineapple communicate with us while we're connected to two completely separate networks. In the example here, we're connected to the internet on some public Wi-Fi hotspot with our computer and the Pineapple is connected to the internet on a 3G USB modem. Now here's the problem with this. The problem is that most carriers and public Wi-Fi hotspots have a firewall in place. And for those of you who aren't familiar with how a firewall works, firewalls are designed to stop unwanted communications from reaching devices connected to the network that the firewall is protecting. Now presumably, you don't have access to these firewalls, which means you can't manually open ports to allow incoming connections. And what this means is any incoming communications will be blocked by the firewall and won't reach the device that you're trying to communicate with. And the way a firewall works is it allows outgoing connections, but it doesn't allow incoming connections. And you can see in the illustration that the pineapple can send a communication through its firewall, but it cannot breach the firewall that's protecting the computer. The same goes for the computer. It can reach out, but it can't breach the firewall in front of the pineapple. So what if we introduced a middleman? This is where our relay server comes in, and a relay server is just that. Because it's not protected by a firewall, or even if it is, because we can open ports in that firewall, the relay server can accept incoming connections from multiple devices. So we know our computer can talk to our relay server, and our pineapple can talk to our relay server. But another thing that our relay server can do is, it can talk back to us. So we now have a bi-directional line of communication between the relay server and our pineapple, and between the relay server and our computer. But here's the really cool thing about a relay server. Our relay server can bridge the connection between the computer and the pineapple. Our pineapple, for example, connects to the relay server on port 22, and our computer connects to the relay server on port 1234, or whatever port we specify. It doesn't matter as long as the port's not in use. The relay server will do what's called port mapping, and essentially what it does is it takes the computer's connection on port 1234 and sends it to the pineapple's connection on port 22. And as a result, we now have a bidirectional line of communication between our computer and our pineapple. So, now that you understand the fundamentals of how a relay server works and why we need one, let's get started so we can create one. First, we need to download Ubuntu Server. So let's open up a web browser. And in the URL bar, we're gonna to navigate to www.ubuntu.com forward slash download forward slash server. And on the Ubuntu server download page, we're going to scroll down slightly and we're going to download Ubuntu server 12.04. So let's select the drop down menu below, choose your flavor and select 32 bit. And once you've made that selection, click the button that says get Ubuntu 12.04 LTS. And this will begin the download. And since Ubuntu server is approximately 700 megabytes in size, the download may take a little while depending on the speed of your internet connection. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the video here and pick up once my download is complete. All right, you can see that my download is complete, so I'm ready to move on. If your download isn't complete yet, pause the video here and wait for your download to finish. When your download is finished, you can start the video and we'll move on. All right, since you're watching this, I'm going to assume that your download is finished and we are now ready to install Ubuntu Server. So we can go ahead and close out the web browser. And you'll notice that I have an Ubuntu Server image file in the top left corner of my desktop. We're going to be using this file to install Ubuntu Server on a virtual machine. To do this, I'm using VMware Fusion, but you'll still be able to follow along if you're using a different desktop virtualization application such as VirtualBox or Parallels because the installation process will be very similar. If you don't want to install Ubuntu Server on a virtual machine, you don't have to. If you have a spare computer, for example, that you can dedicate solely to Ubuntu Server, you can install Ubuntu Server as the primary operating system, or you can always create a live CD or bootable USB thumb drive. So if you're not going to install Ubuntu Server on a virtual machine, go ahead and install it or boot it however you'd like, and then skip ahead in the video to where we're logging into our server for the first time. Okay, now that I've said all of that, 
Let's open our virtual machine application. And again, I'm using VMware Fusion. So the first thing we need to do is start creating our virtual machine. So let's click the Add button. And in the drop down menu, select New. And in the first prompt, we're going to click the button that says Continue Without Disk. And in the next prompt, we're going to select the option that says Use Operating System Installation Disk or Image. And then we'll select the drop down menu and we'll choose the option that says choose a disk or disk image. And in this prompt you'll need to find the Ubuntu server image file that you downloaded and select it. Mine is right here. And then click open. And now we can move on so let's click continue. And now we're being asked to choose the operating system and version. And I notice that VMware has already made the correct selections for me. So make sure that the operating system is set to Linux and that the version is set to Ubuntu and then click continue. And here we're going to tick the box beside use easy install and then we're going to complete the four fields below. The first field is display name and this doesn't really have any significance. You can use any name you like. I'm going to call mine pineapple server. And the second field is account name and the account name is important because it's actually the username that you'll use to log into your server. So you'll want to make note of whatever name you enter here. I'm going to call mine my server. And I should point out that it has to be all lowercase and it cannot contain any spaces or special characters. Now moving on to the third field which is the password field. You can enter any password you like. Just be sure that you remember it because this is the password that you'll use to log into your server. So once you've entered a password, you can move into the fourth and final field, and here you'll simply re-enter the password to confirm it. And finally, I'm going to untick the box beside make your home folder accessible to the virtual machine. And keep in mind that it doesn't matter if this box is ticked or not. We simply don't care if we have access to our home folder because we don't need access. So now we've done all of that, we can click continue. And before I continue on, I want to point out that you may receive a prompt asking you to download VMware tools. If you do receive that prompt, go ahead and click the button that says download VMware tools and VMware tools will begin to download. And when it's finished downloading, it'll automatically install itself and take you to the prompt you see now. And now we're in the final prompt. Here we'll review our settings and make sure everything looks correct and everything looks good to me. So now we can click finish. And in the drop down prompt, you have the option to give your virtual machine file a custom name. I'm going to leave mine as Ubuntu. And when you're ready, you can go ahead and click save. And what's going to happen now is our virtual machine is going to be created for us and Ubuntu server will be installed. The installation process is all automated and it can take anywhere from maybe 10 to 20 minutes to complete. And when the installation is complete, Ubuntu server will automatically start and you'll be prompted to log in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the video and pick up once my installation is finished. All right, you can see that my installation is finished, so I'm ready to move on. If your installation isn't finished yet, simply pause the video here, wait for your installation to finish, and when it's done, start the video and we'll log into our server. All right, since you're watching this, that means your installation is finished and we are now ready to log into our server. Before we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna maximize this window just to make it a little easier for everyone to see. And we can go ahead and enter our login name. And remember that this is the account name we created during our virtual machine setup. Mine is my server. And then go ahead and enter your password. And somehow I entered the wrong password, so bear with me. Again, my login is my server. And now I'm gonna enter my password. and we are now logged into our server. The first thing we're going to do here is we're going to enable the root user. So we need to type sudo space tac i and then press enter and then enter your password. And we are now logged in as root. So now we're going to give our root user a password. So let's type pass wd space root and then press enter. And then go ahead and give your root user any password you'd like. And then you'll need to re-enter that password to confirm it. And we have successfully given our root user a password. 
Now we need to make some adjustments to our network interfaces file and add the network adapter that we'll use to connect our server to the internet. I'm going to use a wireless USB network adapter for this and I recommend you do the same. So go ahead and connect your USB network adapter to your computer. And if you receive a prompt, go ahead and select the option that says connect to Linux. If you didn't receive the prompt to connect your network adapter, simply move your cursor up to the top of the window. And in the virtual machine menu bar, we'll select virtual machine and then select USB and Bluetooth and then find the option that lets you connect your network adapter. Mine is already connected, so I have the option to disconnect Netgear WG-111v3. Okay, so now that we have our network adapter connected to our server, we need to make some adjustments to the network interfaces file. So we need to type nano space forward slash Etsy forward slash network forward slash interfaces and then press enter and your interfaces file should look identical to mine. If not, this means you didn't enter the last command correctly. So what we're going to do here is we're going to add a couple of lines at the bottom of the file. So let's scroll down and then we're going to type auto space and then enter the name of your wireless interface. Mine is WLAN0. Yours may be WLAN0 as well. If not, there's a good chance it's WLAN1 or WLAN2. So go ahead and enter whatever you think your interface name is and then press enter to move down a line and type iFace space and then the name of your wireless interface again space inet space dhcp and that's everything that we need to enter so let's press the control and x keys and then press y and then press enter now we need to restart networking so the changes that we made will take effect so type forward slash etsy forward slash init.d forward slash networking space restart and then press enter and it may take a moment for networking to restart just be patient and let it finish and as soon as it's done we'll be prompted to enter a new command and we'll move on all right now that networking is restarted we need to generate an ssh public key on our server so type ssh tac keygen and then press enter and when you're prompted to enter a file name, simply leave it blank and press enter. And when you're prompted to enter a password, again, leave this blank and press enter. And when you're prompted to confirm the password, again, leave it blank and press enter. And now we need to create an authorized keys file. So type cd space dot ssh and press enter. And then type touch space authorized underscore keys and press enter and then we can type CD press enter and now that we've done all of that let's connect to the internet and check our connection so we're going to type DH client space and then enter the name of your interface we're going to be using our wired interface for this so type ETH 0 and press enter and to test the connection we're going to type ping space google.com and press enter and you can see there that I'm getting results that means I have an internet connection if you see that the host is unreachable that means you probably entered the wrong interface name now to stop the ping scan we'll simply press control C and now that we know we have an internet connection we need to install open SSH server so let's type apt tac get space install space open ssh tac server and then press enter and to continue with the installation type y and press enter all right now that we have the open ssh server installed we need to make some adjustments to our sshd configuration file so let's type nano space forward slash etsy forward slash ssh forward slash sshd underscore config and then press enter and your sshd file should look identical to mine what we're going to do here is we're going to scroll all the way to the bottom of this file and we're going to add the following lines 
First, we're going to type allow with an uppercase A, TCP with an uppercase T, forwarding with an uppercase F, space yes, and then press enter to move down a line, and type gateway with an uppercase G, ports with an uppercase P, space yes, and that's everything we need to add here. So let's press the control and X keys, and then press Y, and then press enter. And now we need to restart the SSA server so those changes will take effect. So type forward slash Etsy, forward slash init.d, forward slash SSH, space restart, and then press enter. And now what we need to do is we need to install wireless tools. So type apt tac get space install space wireless tac tools and press enter. To confirm the installation, type Y and press enter. And now we need to install WPA supplicant. So type apt tac get space install space WPA supplicant and then press enter. And to confirm the installation, type Y and press enter. And now we need to create a WPA supplicant configuration file and add some configurations to it. So type touch space forward slash Etsy forward slash WPA underscore supplicant dot CONF and then press enter. And then type nano space forward slash Etsy forward slash WPA underscore supplicant dot c o n f and then press enter and your wpa supplicant configuration file should be blank just like mine and here the first thing we're going to enter is network equal sign forward facing curly bracket and then press enter to move down to the next line and then type ssid equal sign quotation and the name of the wpa protected network that you want to connect to now obviously if you're gonna be connecting to a web protected network or an open network, you're not even gonna need this file, but it's still good to have. So go ahead and enter the name of whatever network you plan to connect to. Mine is Hackspot, and then close it with a quotation mark, and then press enter to move down a line, and type PSK equal sign, quotation mark, and then enter that wireless network's password, and then close it with a quotation mark, and then press enter to move down a line, and then enter a backwards facing curly bracket. And that's everything that we need to enter here. So let's press the control and X key, and then press Y, and then press enter. And now we can connect our wireless network adapter to a wireless network. So let's type ifconfig space, and then the name of our wireless interface, space down, and then press enter. And then we're going to type DH client space tac r space and then the name of our interface and then press enter. And then we're going to type IWconfig space and then the name of our interface space mode space managed and then press enter. And now I'm gonna show you three different methods for connecting to wireless networks. I'm gonna show you how to connect to a WPA or a WPA2 protected network, and I'm gonna show you how to connect to a web protected network, and I'm gonna show you how to connect to an unencrypted or open network. I'm gonna start by showing you how to connect to an open network. You'll type IWconfig space and then the name of your wireless interface, space ESSID space quotation, and then the name of the wireless network that you wanna to connect to, and then close it with a quotation, and then you would press enter. I'm not gonna be connecting to an open network, so I'm gonna remove this command, and I'm gonna show you what you would enter to connect to a wet protected network. You would type IWconfig space, and then the name of your wireless interface, space ESSID space quotation, and then the name of the wet protected network, and then quotation mark, space, key, space, and then the web key. For example, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 would be a valid web key, and then you would press enter. I'm not gonna be connecting to a web protected network, so I'm gonna remove this command, 
and then I'm going to show you how to connect to a WPA or WPA2 protected network. We're going to type WPA underscore supplicant space TAC uppercase B space TAC uppercase D space NL80211 space TAC I space and then the name of your wireless interface space TAC C space forward slash Etsy forward slash WPA underscore supplicant dot CONF and then press enter and we should now be associated with whatever network we entered in that command and now before we can get an IP address for our wireless network adapter we need to put our virtual network adapter down or this is our wired network adapter so we're going to type ifconfig space and then the name of our built-in network adapter which is ETH0 space down and then press enter and now we're ready to obtain an IP address for our wireless network adapter so let's type DH client space and then the name of your wireless interface and then press enter and we should now be connected to the internet to test this first thing I'm going to do is type ifconfig space and then the name of your wireless interface and press enter and I can see there that my wireless interface has an IP address that was assigned from my home router and now what we want to do is we want to confirm that we have access to the internet so we're going to type ping space google.com and then press enter and from those results right there I can see that I am connected to the internet so I'm going to go ahead and press control plus C to stop the scan now if you receive an error saying that the host is unreachable or the network is unreachable this means that you are not connected to the internet and you may want to refer back to those previous commands that we entered in order to connect to the internet now moving on, we need to make note of some information that we'll be using throughout the final steps of this tutorial. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to type route space tac n and press enter. And what we're going to do here is we're going to make note of the gateway IP address. Mine is 192.168.0.1. So make note of that information. And then we're going to type ifconfig space and the name of our wireless interface and then press enter and go ahead and make note of the IP address next to INET address mine is 192.168.0.11 and now we need to find out what our external IP address is an easy way to do this is to move to a web browser and type in the URL bar what's my IP.org but I'm going to show you how to do it in the terminal we're going to type wget space HTTP colon forward slash forward slash IP echo dot net forward slash plane space tac uppercase O space tac space tac Q space semicolon space echo and then press enter and I can see there that my public or external IP address has been returned to me and it is 71.142.61.126 now it's time to set up port forwarding so we need to move over to a web browser and we're going to log into our routers web-based control center so let's go ahead and move over to a web browser and I'm going to go ahead and minimize my virtual machine library window then open up the web browser and in the URL bar we're going to navigate to HTTP colon forward slash forward slash and then you need to enter your gateway IP address, which if you remember, we made note of that earlier. Mine is 192.168.0.1. Now, if you're not able to access your router's web interface here, this means one of three things. One, you're not connected to your router's wireless network. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to open up your Wi-Fi settings and connect to your wireless network, or you can connect to your router directly via an ethernet cable. It's whatever you prefer or two, you're not entering the correct IP address in the URL bar, or three, your router is accessed in some other way that I'm not familiar with, and if this is the case, you should refer to your router's user manual and follow the instructions for logging into your router. Now, let's go ahead and log into our router. And if you don't know your router's username and password, you can refer to your router's user manual, or you can search for the factory login information online. So I'm gonna go ahead and click login. 
Now, because there are so many different types of routers out there, I'm not going to be able to walk you through the port forwarding process for your specific router unless you're using the same router as I am, which is pretty unlikely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to point you to a website that provides port forwarding guides for virtually every type of router that there is. So let's open up a new tab in our web browser. And in the URL bar, we're going to navigate to http colon forward slash forward slash port forward dot com. And in the left navigation column, we need to click port forwarding guides. And then you need to find the make of your router. And I'm going to scroll down. Mine is Netgear. And when you find the make, go ahead and select it. And you can simply close this ad by clicking close. And now we need to find our router's model. And when you find it, go ahead and click it. Mine is DGN1000. And finally, we need to select the application or service that we plan to use. And we're going to be using SSH. So scroll all the way down to the S section. There it is and click SSH and you should be brought to a step-by-step -step guide for your router. Go ahead and follow that guide and at some point you'll need to specify where port 22 traffic should be forwarded to. You'll use your server's local IP address for this and remember we made note of this earlier on. So make sure you do that and when you're done be sure to save your settings and then log out of your router. I'm going to go ahead and set it up on my router so you can follow along to kind of see how that's done. And in my router settings, I'm going to select firewall rules. And then I'm going to select add under inbound services. And then for the service, I'm just going to leave it as any or all. For your router, you're probably going to have to specify SSH with the UDP TCP service or protocol. And then for send to LAN server, this is the device that I want to send my port 22 traffic to. And this is the server. So I'm going to type in my server's local IP address here, which is 192.168.0.11. And for the wide area network users, I'm just going to leave that as any. And when you're done making those settings, simply click apply. You'll want to make sure all those settings are saved. Down here, I'm going to click apply again just to be safe. And when you're finished saving all of your settings, you can go ahead and log out of your router's web interface. And now it's time to see if we can access our server remotely via SSH. So I'm going to go ahead and close out the web browser. And we need to open a terminal. And in the terminal, we're going to type SSH space root at and then your external IP address. Mine is 71.142.61.126 and then press enter. And when you're prompted to confirm the connection, simply type yes and press enter. And then go ahead and enter your server's password. And we are now logged in to our relay server as root at Ubuntu. What we're going to do now is we're going to create an SSH tunnel between our relay server and our pineapple. So go ahead and power on your Wi-Fi pineapple. And once it's powered on, we need to connect to it either via Wi-Fi or ethernet cable, whatever you prefer. I'm going to connect to my pineapple via Wi-Fi. So I'm going to open my Wi-Fi settings and I'm going to look for my Wi-Fi pineapple access point. Here it is. And now that we're connected to our pineapple, we need to log into our pineapple's web interface. So let's open up a web browser. And in the URL bar, we're going to navigate to HTTP colon forward slash forward slash 172.16.42.1 colon 1471. And then go ahead and enter your pineapple's password and click login. Now, before we do anything, we need to connect our pineapple to the internet. I'm going to use client mode to connect to my Android's portable Wi-Fi hotspot, but you're more than welcome to connect your pineapple to the internet however you prefer. So let's go ahead and open up the network tile and then select the client mode tab and wait for the pineapple to finish scanning for nearby networks. And when it's done, select the drop down menu and choose the network that you'd like to connect to. 
I've already connected to my network because my pineapple automatically connects upon booting up. Once you've selected the network you want to connect to, simply click connect to this network. Now if you're experiencing the same bug that I've been experiencing, client mode causes you to lose your connection to the pineapple whenever you use it. This isn't really a big deal. Simply open your Wi-Fi settings and reconnect to your pineapple and just confirm that you are still connected to your pineapple. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and close out the network tile. And now we need to generate an SSH public key for our pineapple. So let's open up the auto SSH tile. And beside public key, go ahead and click generate. And what's going to happen is your pineapple is going to generate an SSH public key. And if your public key field doesn't automatically populate, you'll simply need to refresh your web browser and then reopen the auto SSH tile. And what we're going to do now is we're going to select that public key and then we're going to right click and copy it. And we're just going to keep it copied and a little bit later here we're going to be pasting it. So now that we've done that, we need to SSH into our pineapple. So let's open up a terminal and in the terminal type SSH space root at 172.16.42.1 and then press enter and go ahead and enter your pineapple's password. And now what we need to do is we need to SSH into our server from our pineapple. So type SSH space root at and then your external IP address minus 71.142.61.126 and then press enter and you'll be prompted to confirm the connection. Go ahead and type yes and press enter. And then enter your server's password. And you should now be logged in to your server. Now what we need to do is type cd space dot ssh and then press enter. And now we're going to add our pineapple's ssh public key to the authorized keys file. And we're going to do this right here in the terminal without using nano or any sort of interactive text editor. We're going to type echo space quotation mark and then go ahead and paste your pineapple's SSH public key and then close it with a quotation space forward arrow forward arrow space authorized underscore keys and then press enter. And your pineapple's SSH public key should now be in your server's authorized keys file. We can go ahead and log out of our server now. So type exit and press enter. And now we need to SSH back into our server again, but with an additional parameter. So type SSH space root at and then your external IP address. And then space tack I space forward slash Etsy forward slash drop bear forward slash ID underscore RSA and then press enter and if you receive an error you can simply ignore it or if it says the file doesn't exist ignore it it's fine and if you notice there we did not have to enter our server's password to log in that's exactly what we need to happen so our pineapple can auto connect to our server when it boots up now we can go ahead and restart our server's SSH service. So let's type forward slash Etsy forward slash init dot D forward slash SSH space restart and then press enter. And now we can log out of our server. So type exit and then press enter. And we can now log out of our pineapple. So type exit and press enter. And now we need to add some settings in the pineapples auto SSH tile. So let's move back into our pineapples web based interface. And in the auto SSH setup, we have three fields in the host field. We're going to enter root at and then our external IP address, which for me is 71.142.61.126. And in the port field, we're going to enter 4567. 
This can essentially be any port you want as long as it's an open port and no other services are running on it. I recommend just using 4567 like I am. And then for the listen port, we're going to enter our Pineapple's web interface port, which is 1471. Now, if you want to access your Pineapple via SSH, you would enter port 22 here. But I want to show you guys how to access the web interface. Once we've made those settings, we can go ahead and click Save. And then we can close out the auto SSH tile. And in the small auto SSH tile, we're going to click Connect. And if your Pineapple connects to your relay server successfully, it will reflect connected in green text. And now what it's time to do is it's time to test out whether or not we can connect to our Pineapple remotely. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to connect to a network that my Pineapple is not connected to, which is going to be my home network. And now that I'm connected to my home network, I'm going to open up a new tab in my web browser and I'm going to navigate to HTTP colon forward slash forward slash and then we need to enter our external IP address, which for me is 71.142.61.126, and then colon, and then we're gonna enter that port number we just specified in the auto SSH settings, which was 4567. And then go ahead and press enter to navigate. And you can see there that I have accessed my pineapple remotely. I'm gonna go ahead and log in. So that's it. That's how you set up a relay server and access your pineapple remotely via SSH tunneling. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.